In this video, we're going to go over some practice problems associated with mutual inductance. The concept of mutual inductance is relevant when two coils of wire are placed next to each other. So if we have a current flowing through one of the wires, let's call this coil one, it's going to create a magnetic field. And if the current is changing, you're going to have a change in magnetic field, which leads to a change in flux. Keep in mind, the magnetic flux is the product of the magnetic field times the area upon which it passes through. So a change in the current in coil one will induce an EMF in coil two. So if the current is increasing, the induced EMF in coil two will be negative. It's going to be in such a way that the induced EMF opposes the current that creates it. If the current in coil 1 is decreasing, the induced EMF will be positive. It wants to support the decreasing current. Now you need to understand that the mutual inductance of each coil is the same. So M12 is equal to M21, so we could simply call it M. Now let's focus on this problem. Two coils of wire are placed next to each other. The current in the first coil increased from 0 to 10 amps in 25 microseconds, and that produced an, an average EMF of negative 24 volts in the second coil. What is the mutual inductance of each coil? The induced EMF in the second coil is equal to negative M times the change in current divided by the change in time. So as you can see, the induced EMF depends on how fast the current is changing. It also depends on the mutual inductance of each inductor. So our goal right now is to calculate M. The induced EMF is negative 24 volts. The change in current, final minus initial, that's going to be 10 minus 0. And it changes in a time period of 25 microseconds. Micro is 10 to the minus 6. If we divide both sides by negative 1, we can cancel the negative sign. Now 10 divided by 25 times 10 to the minus 6, that's 400,000. So M is going to be 24 divided by 400,000. So the mutual inductance of each coil is going to be 6 times 10 to the minus 5, and the unit is the Henry. Now let's move on to part B. So if the current in the first coil decreases from 20 to 0 amps in 4 microseconds, what is the average EMF induced in the second coil? So now that we have the mutual inductance, we can calculate the induced EMF in the second coil. So M is going to be 6 times 10 to the minus 5, and the change in current the final amount is 0, the initial amount is 20, so it's 0 minus 20. And the change in time is 4 microseconds, or 4 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. Now, because the current is decreasing, the induced EMF in the second coil should be positive. So it's negative 6 times 10 to the minus 5, multiplied by negative 20, divided by 4 times 10 to the minus 6. So the induced EMF is positive 300 volts. And so that is the answer. A solenoid with a cross-sectional area of 5 square centimeters has 1,000 turns and is 35 centimeters long. A second coil is wrapped around it and has 400 turns with the same length and area. What is the mutual inductance of each inductor? So let's start with the first coil. And let's say there's a second coil inside of the first coil, which I'm going to highlight it in red. And let's say the length and the cross-sectional area of the two coils are the same. So this is coil 1, and this is coil 2. Now the magnetic field of a solenoid is strongest at the center. 
So we could say that almost all of the magnetic field generated by coil 1 passes through the center of coil 2. Now how can we use this information to calculate the mutual inductance? The mutual inductance is going to equal, this is the mutual inductance for each coil. It's equal to the number of turns in the second coil times the flux that passes through the second coil divided by the current flowing through the first coil. Now the magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field times the area. So the, the flux that passes through coil 2 is due to the magnetic field produced by coil 1. Now the magnetic field of a solenoid or the magnetic field created by coil 1 is equal to mu0 times n times i. Now this n represents the number of turns per meter. So it's the number of turns per unit length. So therefore we can say that B1 it's really U0 N1 times I1 over L. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this equation and substitute it in for B1. So the mutual inductance is going to be N2 times mu0 N1 I1 times A divided by I1. And this is going to go on the bottom, so I'm going to put L over here. So notice that I1 can be canceled. So the mutual inductance for this situation is going to be mu0 times N1 times N2 times the cross-sectional area divided by the length of the solenoid. So mu0 is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. The number of turns in the first coil is 1,000. And the number of turns in the second coil is 400. The cross-sectional area is 5 square centimeters. But let's convert that to meters. So there's 100 centimeters per meter. And we need to square this result. So it's 5 divided by 100 squared. And so that's 5 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. So let's replace A with that. Now L is 35 centimeters long. So we need to divide 35 by 100 to convert that into meters. And so the length is going to be 0.35 meters. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So for the mutual inductance, you should get 7.18 times 10 to the minus 4 henrys. And let's convert that to microhenrys. So 1 microhenry is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 henrys. So we could say that the mutual inductance is 718 microhenrys. Now let's move on to part B. If the current increases from 15 amps to 35 amps in 200 microseconds, what is the EMF induced in the second coil? So we can use this formula. It's going to be negative m times the change in current divided by the change in time. So the mutual inductance is 718 microhenries or 10 to the minus 6 henries. Now the change in current is going to be the final current which is 35 minus the initial value of 15. And the change in time is 200 microseconds or 200 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds.
so you should get negative 71.8 volts. So that's the induced EMF. Because the current in the first coil is increasing, the induced EMF in the second coil is negative. It opposes the increase in flux that passes through the second coil. Now what about part C? If a constant current of 25 amps flows through the first coil, what is the magnetic flux that passes through the second coil? Here's the formula that we need. M is equal to N2 times the flux that passes through coil 2 divided by the current in coil 1. So our goal is to calculate the magnetic flux that passes through the second coil. And so if we rearrange the equation, it's going to look like this. It's going to be the mutual inductance times I1 divided by the number of turns in the second coil. So the mutual inductance is 718 times 10 to the minus 6 Henry's. In the first coil, we have a constant current of 25 amps. So the flux will be constant provided that the area doesn't change. Now the number of turns in the second coil is 400. So this is going to be 4.49 times 10 to the minus 5 Weber's. So that's the unit for the magnetic flux. And so this is the answer.